Okay guys, we're back with solving absolute value inequalities here. And I just wanna explain a little bit more about um, these problems and just, there's a little bit more I wasn't able to cover in the last video, especially related to the solutions. So I just wanna do just two more examples and um, let's solve these guys out first. Okay, so like for number one, I've got five times the absolute value X plus three is less than 25. Okay, so you have to, divide by that five. So now I'm left with absolute value x plus three is less than 25 divided by five is five. I'm actually gonna stop that one right there. I know if, 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 if you know what's happening here, you know the next step is gonna be to split it, but uh, this, is, this is where it kind of, the new stuff that I haven't covered yet, I'll be able to explain right there, okay? So same thing for number two, let's get it down to that step and then I'll explain uh, what's new about this, okay? Again, I can't split this till the absolute value is by itself. And the only thing getting in the way of that is this minus seven that's on this side, okay? So I have to plus seven from both sides. So I'm left with absolute value four X is greater than 24, okay? And so the absolute values are by itself. And again, it, it, I'm ready to split these in both situations, okay? Um, but this is where I want to explain uh, the solute with the solutions. Okay, with with inequalities, the next video is going to be on something called compound inequalities, and this kind of relates to that. Okay, but basically, when we have solutions, okay, when we when we have absolute value inequalities and the solutions to them, there's two possibilities for those, um, and those are we can have an and uh, inequality solution, and we can have an or inequality solution. Okay, and it's going to be easier when you can you could you you see the answers. Okay, but there's just a rule to remember kind of at the beginning when we're when we're at this step here. Okay, we know which one it's going to be right at the beginning. Okay, because it depends on what the inequality sign is at the start. Okay, so this inequality sign is a less than right less than and also relating to this you could have less than or equal to follows the same rule. Okay. If it's either of these at the start, at the beginning of the problem, or I guess when you go to split it, okay, when you go to split it at this point, if it is a less than, and it is here, okay, um, this would be an and. The, the solution is going to be an and, okay? And again, I'll, as I finish this out, I'll explain more what that looks like, okay? And then this one's a greater than, right? And then when I go to split it, it's a greater than. So... If it's a greater than or a greater than or equal to, that's gonna be the other one. That's gonna be an or solution, okay? So you know what it's gonna be, and or or, right off the bat. And I know that might not make much sense right now, but I always like to think of fun ways to remember these, and unfortunately, uh, I really don't, but the only thing I could think of is greater than, greater than, right, greater, G starts with a capital G, that kind of looks like an O almost. So uh, greater than or equal to is an or, and a less than or equal to uh, goes with and. So uh, if you can think of other fun ways to remember that, tying those together, uh, great. But anyway, so finishing these out, solving these, okay? Again, first one that I, that I split it up into would be just the exact same thing, just without the absolute value bars. So x plus three is less than five. Okay, just because this one's quick, let me finish this out. So I'll minus three from both sides, um, and I get x is less than two. And then my second one, right, this is where my double flip happens. x plus three is greater than, right, it flips from less than to greater than, and this changes from positive five to negative five. And I minus three from both sides, okay, so I end up with x is greater than negative five minus three is negative eight. Now, let me graph this, okay, let me graph this. And again, remembering that this is an and solution. So my official way of writing this would be x is less than two and x is greater than negative eight, okay? There's another way you could write that too. I'll, I'll go over that in a second. But if I was just to graph these on the number line here, okay, x is less than two. I have my circle at two, my open circle, because two exactly is not included and I would draw an arrow to all the numbers below that or less than that going that way, okay? And then x is greater than negative eight. Let me add another tick mark here. 
x is greater than negative 8, right, that would be a circle right here at negative 8, and it would be going to all the numbers above that. Here's the connection, okay? You see that for these two arrows, there's kind of an overlap, right? If I was to keep this one from 2 going, it would go past negative 8 all the way down there, right? If I was to keep this negative 8 one going, it would go past 2 all the way here. But because there's overlap, okay, that's that's another way to illustrate that it's and, right? So it's 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 and is when we have kind of that span of numbers where there's two error, there's there's two points and it's kind of all the numbers in the middle of those, okay, where there's overlapping lines. To kind of draw this in a neater way, what it would look like would be on negative eight an open circle and then kind of a, a positive two on an open circle, kind of looking like I, I like lifting weights, so that would be like almost like a barbell with weights on the sides. So that is an and. That's what an and looks like. And so you know, tying this all together, when it's less than, when you go to split the inequality, when it's less than, you know that it should result in a graph where there's overlapping lines on the number line. That's a great way to check your answer. Okay, when it's less than, it should be an and solution, meaning it's overlapping on the number line. And then showing number two, number two is gonna be different, okay? 4x is greater than 24, okay? So if I split this, again, keep the first one the same, just without the absolute value bars. So 4x is greater than 24. And then the second one, 4x, again, double flip, so less than negative 24. So I have those, and these are gonna be easy to solve as well. So I divide both sides by four. So 24 divided by 4 would be 6, so x is greater than 6 is one of my solutions, okay? And then for this one, I divide both sides by 4, and I get x is less than negative 6. All right, so let's graph this. x is greater than 6, and x is less than negative 6. So first one, x is greater than 6. So I go here, and write all the numbers greater than 6 would be going more positive, right? 7, 8, 9, 10, all the numbers higher than positive 6. Okay, but then the second one, x is less than negative six. X is less than negative six, so I go to negative six, open circle, less than negative six means I'm going to the left where all the numbers lower than that, okay? So look at the difference between this graph and this graph, okay? This one, and, and all this is gonna be true of all and graphs, okay? And graphs have overlapping lines on your number line when you graph the solutions, okay? Or, right, I said this one, when it's when you split it and it has greater than, that means it's going to be an or solution. Or solutions have no overlap. Or means they like they don't like each other. They they're they're going the opposite directions of each other. Okay. Where and means hey, they like each other. They're going towards each other. Or means no overlap, okay, on your number line. And and means there is overlap on your number line. Okay. Right, because this is going to be kind of two separate groups of numbers. So it's going to be every number less than negative 6, or it could be every number higher than 6. So it's kind of two separate groups of numbers, where this one is just a single span of numbers from negative 8 to positive 2. There's not like some other group that, that's, that's a separate span. Okay, so hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Okay, maybe I'll do one more here. I'll erase them, and uh, we'll, get the, we'll get an idea of it a little bit better. Okay. Alrighty, so I've got number three up here. We got two times the absolute value, 4x plus one, and absolute value minus five is less than or equal to one, okay? Before we jump into this, again, just to review with you, okay? And solutions, and solutions are less than or less than or equal to uh, inequalities. When you go to split the inequality up, that is, that is when it's an and scenario. And then again, and on the number line means it's going to be kind of that overlapping, just a single span of numbers on the number line. That's what it would look like. Okay. Whereas or, again, I don't know if it's at all helpful, capital G, it kind of looks like an O. That's, that's not really good. So yeah, that's, hopefully you could think of a better way to remember that. But it's either one of the greater thans, okay, greater than or equal to, or greater than, okay, and on the number line, that's going to look like kind of two separate arrows kind of go in the opposite directions of each other, okay? So hopefully you remember that um, moving forward, okay? Anyway, let's just solve this last one out, okay? And again, you might be looking at this right away and you might be thinking, oh, that's gonna be an 
and one, because that's what the inequality sign is, less than or equal to. And that's good to observe that right away. But again, it's, it's, it's only when we're really only worried about it when we, we get the absolute value by itself. And then we see what the inequality sign is. OK, so don't. That's good if you, you notice that right away. But wait until we, we cancel out these few numbers and then see what it is. OK, because sometimes it does change. So I plus five to both sides first to cancel out this minus five because that's not part of the absolute value. So I do that and I'm left with two times four X plus one is less than or equal to one plus five is six, okay? Now, again, I can't split it yet because this two's out here. So I have to divide by that two, okay? And I'm left with absolute value four X plus one is less than or equal to three, okay? And now, you know you're ready to split it because the absolute value is by itself, okay? And now you look at the absolute value, or sorry, you look at the inequality sign, and you think, okay, that is less than. So that, and you're not gonna have this table, helpful table for you, but um, maybe you could draw it yourself on, on a quiz or a test if you were to take that. Um, but yeah, making that connection here as we're still learning it, it's less than or equal to, when I'm ready to split it. So that means the solution is gonna be and. And that means on the number line, I know what my solution should look like. Now I'm ready to uh, split it up and solve. So four X plus one is less than or equal to three. Again, keep it the exact same without the absolute value bars. And then the second one, four X plus one is greater than or equal to, right? Double flip, negative three, okay? Flip this, flip that sign, okay? And now I solve, I'm gonna get two separate answers. So minus one from both sides, four X is less than or equal to two, and then divide by four. So X is less than or equal to two fourths or one half, okay? And then my second one, minus one from both sides, four X is greater than or equal to negative four, Okay, and then I divide by that four. So X is greater than or equal to negative one. Okay, so I go to graph this. And again, remember, your graph should look like overlapping lines. The arrows should be going towards each other. Okay, so let's just make sure. Let's graph this to be sure. Okay, X is less than or equal to one half. So I'll draw a, a closed circle because of that equal to, right? Going this way, okay? less than or equal to. So X is greater than or equal to negative one. Okay, so that's gonna be a an open circle, or sorry, closed circle. And again, pointing to the, to the right, okay? So going this way. So yes, there is overlap like I want there to be, right? And again, it's all, X can only be what these, what the overlap is, which isn't a very big span of numbers. So if I was to make that a little bit neater, it'd be going from negative one to positive one half. And really that's all that X could be. X could be those few spans of numbers. Um, anything between negative one and positive one half. Okay. So I would write my solution as X is less than or equal to a half and X is greater than or equal to negative one. There's another way you could write this though. And this will be the last thing I say on this. Okay. We've talked about this before, okay? Or if we haven't yet, you would have talked about in Algebra 1 a little bit. Um, there's another way I could write this, okay? I could say negative one is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to a half, okay? You can only do this with and ones, okay? Because what this is, this is kind of a way of condensing these two different statements into one, okay? Basically what it is, is it's flipping this whole thing around right, because saying negative one is less than or equal to x is the same as this. It's just flipping everything, okay? And that's what this half of the statement is, okay? But then, it, and then it's also bringing this other one there. So this, either one of these would be acceptable, okay? But just know that you'll see this sometimes, and just know that that means the same thing as that, okay? So there it is. There is absolute value inequalities. We got one more lesson in unit one to do. Um, and we will do that in another video. So good job. Thank you.